So, Domain Abyss. This game is an odd one. This is in development for around seven years, with it releasing February 25th, 2018. Meaning this game had its fourth anniversary, which is terrifying, because that's how time works, and due to little anything else, finding this on Game Joe back then, and me thinking, this game's alright. And I don't really think that anymore. This was mainly developed by Onitrick and Blackout. Remember Blackout? Then you know, the same guy that co-developed Fnatic 2017, made Nightmare Before Disney, and there's some uh-ohs with a minor. So Dormitivus has been through what we like to call development hell. The game originally was going to be a point-and-click free roam game, where you must escape before 6am, with minigames can be included to add a bit more lore. But those were later scrapped, and now it's a normal FNAF fan game, with some of its original ideas being used in different ways. Let's just hope the game itself is... good. <laughs> yeah. Let's. Pass the warning screen and Boom. title screen, and it certainly is one. To be fair, and to give it some credit, it is semi-original. Like it isn't the scary animatronic on the right side having a seizure. It's a monitor on the desk with flashes of the animatronics appearing every once in a while. Speaking of animatronics, who are we dealing with? Well, may I introduce you to the Havoc animatronics. I've never- I haven't even seen this- that, that was <laughs> Why is it weird that way? This kid's name was Thad. This Ooh. Oh, no. oh no. His name was Ted. Supposedly, according to the lore, these are the dead spirits of Purple Guy's victims that have gone crazy and stupid. Though they don't look ghostly at all, so I'm gonna dock some points for that oversight. I mean, the puppet sorta looks like a ghostly figure, but it's more of an onion than a dead kid. They stink? Yes. And Molten Evil. I mean, that's just a molted shadow body. So, what's their reason for killing you? It's because of your. plasma? See, let me explain. Since we, the Night Guard from FNAF 3, named John Wright, died in the fire from Fat First Fright, and our ghost body has a lot of plasma, and due to the child spirits being combined with the animatronics, they've been corrupted and all f***ed up. And they really want that plasma back. So what do they do exactly when they have our MacGuffin? I, I don't know, I, I guess they grow up to be a, a real boy. I should probably start talking about the gameplay. We'll save the rest of the lore for later. That requires its own segment. First night in, and we can immediately notice something's off. Isn't that the desk from FNAF 3 over there? But that can't be possible. This doesn't look like Fazbear's Fright, and we aren't even facing the desk. Well, thankfully, the phone guy, named Peter Wright, tells us what's up. Hello? Hello? Your name's John? 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 I think it's John. Well, uh, my name's Peter. Now, before you start questioning me how you could meet them after they were killed back in the 80s, there's a pretty simple answer. You're dead, John. We're in Purgatory, which is a combination of Fredbear's Family Diner and the last place we died, which happens to be Fazbear's Fright. Peter tells us that our main mechanic for most of the game is to hide. More specifically, run to the other side of the room, crawling under your desk for some reason, going away from any of the characters, looking to the left or right, respectively. There are some exceptions to this rule, and I shall go over them now. Havoc Chica, Freddy, and the BOA are the only ones that follow that rule. While for Havoc Puppet, you gotta stare at him out the window by turning around. Aim our reel, gotta stare at the camera that he'll say out loud until he returns to normal. Though he'll sometimes already be normal, tricking you. My reel? Soul Cage will ooga booga jump scare you, and you must stare at him at the ceiling. Molten Evil is the golden fright of the game. And by that, I mean he'll kick you back to the warning screen if you don't look up at the ceiling when it all gets all gobbly goobly. And Havoc Foxy sorta has the cheek of Freddy and BOA mechanic, but he's shared with Golden Call, and he, and he can go f himself. Once Foxy gets out, as he has the FNAF 1 Foxy mechanic, Golden Call will f to your monitor that you must type whatever the longest word, 83, or numbers in Cam 5. Then, once that's done, you gotta move to the other side to avoid Foxy. Also, you can't move to the other side when the pop-up is on, on your screen. F*** these guys. But you know, they could have been the pedoph pedophilic killer. Meet 
Garvey White, aka the Purple Guy, aka Black Guy. Garvey is c c quite the oddball, to say the least. He's the main antagonist, no sh**, and has a knight dedicated to him in a section of a night at 5 a.m., similar to Nightmare Fredbear and Nightmare in FNAF 4. What you gotta do is listen to his movements. If he laughs from the left or right, you gotta look in those directions, and if it's centered, you gotta look up. If he's in the vents, you gotta slow him down by clicking on the vent he's in. And to make it worse, the game just decides to turn your brightness down when you aren't looking at him and drains your power the more you use your cameras, with little to no indication of your power level. Also, the vent UI is small as hell, so you better be precise or else you're gonna flip to another camera. Anything else? How the hell did you know or even remember all this? This, this seems quite complicated. Well, clearly, you didn't see the tutorial button on the bottom right of the monitor on the, on the title screen. That explains all the tricks for you, since Peter over here doesn't do a good job of doing that, and there's actually no phone call at all when Garvey gets introduced, so you gotta read an entire <laughs> essay in order to know what to do. Of course, since this is a five nights at Freddy's game, you think five nights would be the limit, because you know, five seems like a good number. Well, clearly having 11 nights and a secret bonus night where the 11 nights go from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. seems just fine. Oh, don't worry. The secret night goes from 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. Why is this the only night that goes to 6 a.m.? Why couldn't this be the normal hours? Well, anything else, you f***ing dumbass. This is a secret night. Sometimes secret nights in fan games change the hours. Plus, this is an entirely different night with new mechanics and location. Stop crying and continue playing the funny spooky game. <sighs> Fine, guess I'll talk about the ending. After watching a cutscene with a Resident Evil 4 quick time event, a gravestone and a present with black goo dripping out of it are shown onto you, with the gravestone saying, We're a brat, scum, and a waste of air. So that's, that's, quite, that's quite mean. This also unlocks most of the extras, giving us a closer look at all the animatronics, jump scares, and the night selection, and all of the... tapes. Alright. The tapes. On night one, Peter states how we must find tapes every night, claiming, You will need this if you want to escape from here. How do we find them? They are going to appear in a different camera every night. If you see it, click on it with that mouse on the old computer in your room and you'll probably obtain it. Now I'm sure you've already noticed two problems with this. Each night, more animatronics appear, making the task to find these tapes more tedious and risky, especially once Havoc, Foxy, and Ariel, and Golden Call are in the mix. Second, the cameras fucking suck. You see, Blackout thought that having a nice little transparent layout of the map on the bottom right or left, it's a bit too nice and inconvenient, so he decided to be a little goofy and quirky, and made it, uh, made it like a tab on a search engine. So we'll have to expand the tab, click the camera you want, minimize the tab so you can see the entire room, and repeat. This isn't cool or interesting at all. It's annoying and a complete obstacle when you're dealing with Amariel and... So now you must move TWO tabs, and you can barely see what Foxy types most of the time. Who thought this was a good idea? Look, I, I like a good challenge here and there. This is not how you make a challenge. This is how you make a game that tries so badly to be hard where the difficulty is what you like to call RNG. <laughs> and don't even get me started on the secret keys. How the hell was I supposed to know of their existence except for a hint on the nightmare mode without going to the fucking Wikipedia? Okay, 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 okay. <sighs> Sorry. Just got sidetracked for a bit. So, what's your reward for finding all tapes, you may be wondering? Well, we get to hear the mad ramblings of the pedophilic, psychopathic, sociopathic, Heath Ledger wannabe, Garvey White. It's a shame. <laughs> Such a shame. Dude, this guy watched the Dark Knight ones. My man, my man really, uh, really took some inspiration from Heath Ledger. <laughs> I, I like it. I like children. <laughs> okay, five dollar bill in my hand. You see that kid over there? Your brother. Chuck him into the mouth of this animatronic bear, and you get five dollars. Do it for the fine. Three years and six dollars. It's me. He's a, he's a, he's a, it's me. <gasps> no, they got Onishi Onision is it's who they got. <laughs> That's true. Lower time. So Garvey White over here has a condition where he's physically crippled and everyone makes fun of him for it. Racism. 
so he's had enough and decides to game in those who are big meanie heads towards him. On March 18th, 1982, at Kick Bears, he game in some kid, throwing them into a dumpster. What did they do? I don't know, they were they were a kid, so I thought I was honestly doing them a favor. On July 5th, 1983, at Fred Bears this time, Garvey drags a 15-year-old girl and... Uh... Am I, am I allowed to say what he did to her? Right. I'll, I'll just do an another jump. Three days later, somehow Fred Barris is still open and Garvey pays our random team $5 to game and their little brother. Wow. <laughs> what a good sibling. On February 2nd, 1985, at Freddy's this time, Garvey lures five kids into parts and services and silently quickscopes all of them without any problems since the walls are soundproof. November 13th, 1987, and s seriously, how is Freddy still opened? Garvey decloaks behind Fred Smith, who is investigating the animatronics after a complaint of smell and attempts to backstab him. However, Fritz spy checks behind him and runs away. Though, F Fritz forgot that Garvey was a spy main and knows how to matter or stab him. So he's put into the quick bear suit unconscious and dies inside of him. November 10th, 1983, and phone, phone guy is dead inside Golden Freddy and yet another five kids are dead and boom, Fazbear's fright burns to the ground. And that's all of Dormanibus. Overall, the game's not good. The 10 nights would have been fine if the hours weren't annoyingly long. The difficulty could really cool down with this RNG, and the difficulty spike between each night is a bit annoying. The cameras, while alright in idea, just making me wish that was just the default way of using cameras in a FNAF game. Cause it's a hassle when trying to navigate through the map. The way the mechanics are explained could have been done way better than just an entire an entire summary in an essay. Also, some things Blackout has done knocks it down a bit. Really, the only compliment I can give is like two of the animatronic designs I sort of liked. I give Dormitibus four plasma sources out of ten space bar quick time events. Tune in next time, where I reveal my personal purgatory, that being a mix of Fred Bear's Family Diner and the White Household. Ha 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 ha!